One morning six years ago, I woke up with an overwhelming feeling of dread. I was beginning to feel more and more suffocated by my life as an accountant. You see, I had chosen this life, but I felt no sense of meaning, no sense of purpose. Not only was I unfulfilled, but I was falling apart. And as I showered that morning, I thought to myself, if I died today, it wouldn't be so bad. I went to work that morning, I sat at my desk and I worked on my spreadsheets like I did every other day. And at the end of the day, I packed up my stuff and I drove to go back home. But on that specific day on the drive back, everything changed. As I was going down the freeway at 70 miles per hour, a big white truck that was in front of me swerved to avoid a broken down minivan. I didn't have time to get out of the way, so I crashed head first into the back of the car. As the windscreen shattered, I closed my eyes and braced myself as my car was flying viciously into oncoming traffic. And in the chaos and noise, the first thought that came to my head was, thank God I don't have to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> as you can see, I'm standing in front of you today. I survived, but in the days and weeks that followed, I thought to myself, what was the point of surviving only to go back to a life that made me feel like I was dying. And perhaps my case is extreme, but maybe you felt something similar. A lack of fulfillment in your job, a lack of fulfillment in your relationships, just going through the motion, surviving, not quite thriving, living not a full life, but a half one. And after my accident, I realized that yes, we're given life, but we also have to choose it for ourselves. You see, we hear these stories of work that doesn't feel like work, we hear these stories of epic and beautiful love, and if that was true, I wanted that for myself as well. As Thoreau, the great poet, once wrote, I wished to live deliberately. I did not wish to live what was not life, nor did I want to practice resignation. I wanted to live deeply and suck all the marrow out of life. That is my intention. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I was determined to figure it out. A couple weeks later, I stumbled upon an interview with Oprah and Gary Zukav, author of the New York Times bestselling book, The Seat of the Soul. And the core message of the book struck right to the center of my being. It said, in order to live an authentic and fulfilling life, you have to align your personality with your purpose. In order to live an authentic and fulfilling life, you have to align your personality with your soul's purpose. And according to the book, there are three key steps to make that happen. First, uncover your personality. So who are you deep down inside? What are your values, your motivations? What lights you up? Two, use your personality to find your purpose and turn that light from within outward to be of service to other people. And third, take steps every single day to live that personality and that purpose. So step one, uncover my personality. What would the person that I wanted to become have to do to live a life that was true to him? After much thought, I knew what my first act had to be. I would have to reveal to my parents that I was what they, as Africans, would call evil, unnatural, of the dark side, un-African. I would have to reveal to my parents that I was gay. And I say this as if it was easy, but it was incredibly difficult. But I was determined to not hide any parts of my identity. And during this time, I decided to leave my lucrative but painful accounting job. And despite strong protests from my parents, I took three months off to travel alone, travel alone to seven Asian countries. I was seeking some kind of fulfillment, some kind of awakening. And as a way to capture and share those experiences, I decided to film a video blog. And to my great surprise, I discovered my deep, deep love for using video as a way to capture and share experiences with other people. From hunting down the most delicious ramen in the back streets of Kyoto, to trying to recreate my very own eat, pray, love moment in Bali, <laughs> which by the way is not a thing. 
but I felt fulfilled, I felt alive. You see, video allowed me to show and not have to tell, to be and not have to perform. I could just be my most authentic form. Who would you be in your most authentic form? What would you be doing? What purpose might you stumble upon? You see, as I created these videos, I felt something I hadn't felt before, a deeper sense of connection to the young Africans that were watching my videos. This was step two in action. My commitment to uncovering my personality led me right to my purpose, which is to inspire and entertain young Africans through online video. There is nothing else in the world that I'd rather do. And what I know now in hindsight is that it's the commitment, the commitment to wanting a better relationship, the commitment to wanting a more fulfilling job, the commitment to finding your purpose is the most important step. As Goethe, the famous German writer, once wrote, until one is committed, there is hesitancy, the chance to draw back. But the moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves to. You see, when we commit, we see things we otherwise wouldn't have seen. We make connections we otherwise wouldn't have made. The moment one commits oneself, then providence moves to. So what did I have to do next? I had to figure out what I was going to commit to. What are you willing to commit to today, right here, right now? Before my accident, I was lost and hopeless as an accountant, but after my travels, I felt alive. I felt fulfilled. The feeling was cellular. I could feel it. It was real. When you commit to uncovering your personality and your purpose, I have no doubt that that, that, that is possible for you too. That brings me to step three. Discovery of your purpose is necessary but not sufficient to live an authentic and fulfilling life. You have to take the steps to live it every single day. So because I like online video, I set my sights in Hollywood. The lights, the camera, the action. But from my home in South Africa, Hollywood seemed too far away. And I could have stopped, but I didn't. I had committed. And what I know now is that the most successful people just start exactly where they are. So I started my very own YouTube show with my best friend, Lindy, dedicated to sharing stories with young Africans just like myself, everything from serious to funny topics, like interracial dating, what it means to be African in modern times, and even the trials and tribulations of black girls' hair. And I know it's easy to just say, I'll just start my own YouTube show, but it was incredibly hard. You see, building an online following is tough, but facing my inner doubts and outer critics is even harder. To this day, I still receive homophobic comments, things like, why would you share this video with me? This guy looks gay. I don't want to see stuff like that. And what that has taught me is that authenticity is not all upside. You will get beaten down in the process. But instead of feeling like I was dying, I was living. A show that I created in my bedroom was watched by over 10,000 people in 150 countries. The show has paved the brick road of blessings for me. I have so many supporters who have become super fans, some who have even become friends. And one of those friends is Laura. Laura is a super fan from Zimbabwe. And because I like to get to know my super fans, I set up a time to Skype call with her. Little did I know the impact this call would have on my life. It turns out that Laura is a little person and that because of the show, she was inspired to start her very own YouTube show and the Little People's Association for Zimbabwe, a place for little people to come together, share stories and inspire each other. She told me that because of my show, she knew that she was enough. As Marianne Williamson, the author once wrote, as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people the permission to do the same. When we choose life, we unconsciously give other people the permission to do the same. I went from being a miserable accountant, and I'm an inspired YouTube producer with a mission to light up other people's lives. I'm even building a company with that mission. Who are you now? Who could you be? 
with the commitment to uncovering your personality and your purpose, imagine what you could do, how big you could play. And in the time since my journey began, I've learned that playing big in the world doesn't have to mean being the CEO of the next best startup in Silicon Valley, or Beyonce at the Super Bowl, <laughs> or starting your very own YouTube show. We can choose to play big every day by having the courage to choose life, by having the courage to uncover our personality and our purpose. Because once you commit to choosing life, I can assure you that providence will move to and your light will give other people the courage to do the same. Thank you.